This is MXUX. This is a video about Amazon's recent purchase of Zooks and I think just about Amazon in general. I'm going to talk about the design of the Zooks, the issues I think there are, um, their goal of getting into the self driving, and then we're going to have a, a summary of uh, excuse me what we did here. So let's just get started with this slideshow real quick here. All right, this is the Zooks. This is uh, the the vehicle. This is a purpose-built vehicle, people mover, autonomous electric taxi. It's got four-wheel steering, and uh, it's ambidextrous, ambidextrous or whatever. You can see it's got a lot of hardware on it. We'll go over that later. What I just want to point out right now is we have seats facing each other. So someone's always going to be sitting backwards and uh, we we have a, a, a kind of a shielded view here and there's a small view here and I'm going to go to the next slide it's going to show that these front and rear windows are blocked about up to here so really it's kind of claustrophobic in that you don't have a lot of visual cues of you know where you're going um, it's like you're in a fun house I think Anyway, that's how I would feel. I, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable. Now, this is a more of a detail. This is the front and the rear of the Zooks. And it's hard to tell from the pictures, but this is, this is blocked. And this is open, but that is out of the line of sight. So the, the area that's open is out of the line of sight of the passengers. So they have this little window here, these two windows, and then they have a sunroof, but they don't have any cues of whether they're going forwards or backwards. Or, you know, I don't think there's a lot of cues uh, in any case, but I don't think a lot of people notice this. They didn't release a lot of detailed pictures of the interior of this vehicle, but these are some things that I personally noticed. and. Um, Anyway, this also has four-wheel steering, and it can go 70 miles an hour. So imagine yourself being in this compartment and not being able to see where you're I mean, I don't know. Anyway, let's, let's move on to the next slide. And again, these are the seats, and of course, designed before COVID, so I don't know, maybe they could put a shield up in here or something. But anyway, they're facing each other. And you can see there's not a lot of view here, you know. I mean, it's okay, but and these, these headrests are blocking. And then behind the headrest, it's blocked as well. So really, you got, a, you got like a panorama roof up here. And then you got like this wall of uh, windows here with thick frames. And you have nothing on this end. It's up high. You just see the light coming over the transom, kind of uh, over the seats. So it's kind of a weird uh, seating arrangement. And of course, someone's always going to be sitting facing backwards in this thing. And um, just by way of comparison, this was the prototype, and it was, you know, much bigger inside. And um, but just to give you an idea, it was roomier. Whereas the Zooks is quite, quite small. Now this is, this is a, a sample of a Zooks self-driving system. And I'm going to play this video. And what's, what's interesting is, see the hood of the car here? This isn't done in the Zooks vehicle. This is done in a, you know, Taurus or some kind of three box sedan and uh anyway it's they chose to use a car to demonstrate it uh but anyway you can see it's uh, got this i believe they used mapping as well as the onboard sensors i believe they map the streets they use uh, some satellite based mapping as well as to as well as mapping these objects but this is you know pretty much We've all gotten so bored with these self-driving systems now. That's really amazing. But um, that gives you an idea of their self-driving system. 
And uh, we just saw that. Let's go to the next slide. Now, this is, here's the interesting thing. There's a notice down here. You can't read it. It says, driving autonomously on closed city streets. So this was in San Francisco, but this was closed off. There, all of this was rehearsed. These are extras. You know, these cars are rentals probably. And it's uh, made to look like it's live, but it's not. It's stagecraft. So let's just play this video real quick here. And it being stagecraft, and it's still quite slow. And uh, you can see it's stopping for some vehicles there. And uh, it's, uh, again, moving quite slow. I think Tesla's going to beat them. It's like Jimmy the Snail. Or what, what does that uh, Elon Musk say? The Snail? Anyway, that's the tunneling. Anyway, it's pausing here for people walking in front of it. And um, but again, this is on closed streets. These are all actors. This is all staged. But it, I mean, it's not a pusher, okay? But um, and this demonstrates the four wheel steering, the front and rear wheel steer. Now, can you imagine being in that thing facing the wrong way with four wheel steering and not being able to see where you're going? Just my opinion. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. But um, it doesn't sound too inviting to me, personally. I don't know. All right, that's the end of the video there. That gives you an idea. And again, that's their system, but that was on a closed, you know, they have a very small type down at the bottom. A closed, uh, closed street, closed street, closed demonstration. And we just saw that. So let's go to the next. Okay, clean up in Zooks aisle one. What is Amazon thinking? We've got Zooks plus Amazon here. There's your Zooks taxi. And what's this? Uh oh, what's that? All right, I'm going to try to explain this. Clean up in Zooks aisle one. This is uh, it, through my own research. I mean, I thought about this and I looked a couple things up and I just I thought it would be an interesting video. This is a motion sickness study. It's from this uh, site called ResearchGate, which is really cool. You can discover all kind of scientific research. You can hire researchers. It's a bunch of PhDs and stuff. Um, this is, um, this is a, a study that I'm quoting out of here that was written by these four guys. I want to give them all credit. And um, motion sickness in automated vehicles with forward and rearward facing seats orientations well it's just what i was talking about i was surprised to find this actually um and this is february 2019 so according to the date of this video this is fairly recent and this is a uh, phd uh, it's uh, probably a, a thesis for a phd or um but anyway that this is the study and these are the people that were uh it's quoted as being authors on this study. So, as you know, roll call. There's, you can look this up for yourself. Again, this I, I highly advise this. I recommend this site. It's great. I mean, it's got all kind of information on it. Anyway, this is an abstract of their. That's this is their abstract, which is kind of like a, you know, the, the executive summary that comes before the thing. But anyway. Uh, automatic vehicles, blah, 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 cabin design, no physical driving controls. Okay, one common concept uh, for an automated vehicle is to have both forward and rearward facing seats. And it says traveling backwards can increase the likelihood of experiencing motion sickness due to the inability of occupants to anticipate the future motion trajectory. And I think this goes into play with them having their vision blocked as well. So not only are they facing the wrong way, they they can't see what's in front or behind, uh, respectively, in the vehicle. Aim to empirically evaluate the impact of seating orientation on the levels of motion sickness. Uh, automated vehicles with forward and rearward facing seats. And it just says how it was done, blah, blah, blah. Uh, 
The participants conducted tests twice, forward and rearward seating, randomized crossword sign, levels of sickness was reported was relatively low with an increase in the mean level of sickness recorded when traveling rearwards. So as expected, this increase was particularly pronounced under urban driving conditions. It concluded that rearward travel and automatic vehicles will comp compromise the passenger experience. And they kind of understate things there, but what they're saying is uh, it's very uncomfortable and I guess you wouldn't want to do it for any length of time. And, and that, that vehicle can go 70 miles an hour. They're planning on highway speeds with that. Anyway, significant increase in the mean level. And um, this is a second study that was done, and there's more detail on that. You can read that. They go into facing backwards, does what you think it would do. And uh, this is another uh, study by increased bone vibrations, reduce blah, 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 automated vehicles. And that's by these guys right here. And this is February 2020. And this is off the same site. Signs of APs with respect to motion sickness is discussed and concludes the design should maximize for the ability for occupants to anticipate the future motion path of the vehicle. That's the blocked windows I was talking. Also been demonstrated there's a significant increase in motion sickness within an AV concept in a real world or when fitted with rearward staking as facing seats. So again, uh, Anticipation of the future motion is blocked and rearward, uh, rearward facing seat, significant increase in motion sickness. Uh, the study demonstrated by, if you made people stare down at the floor uh, at one spot, they didn't get sick. But when, they, when they're not told to stare at one spot on the floor, 100% uh, of the passengers noted an increase in sickness in a similar uh, urban AV driving in viward facing rearwards so 100% the benefit that forward seeing passengers enjoy is a plethora of anticipatory clues from the road ahead which is completely blocked so in other words not only does it have people sitting backwards it also removes, uh, removes the cues the visual cues that allows you to anticipate what's going to happen next uh, in your route. Um, 100% there's an increase in reported sickness. Now, if you stare at a spot, maybe they could put a dot on the floor, say that lights up when it starts moving, and then you stare at that. I don't know. Anyway, these are two studies. Uh, both of them kind of understated, but they indicate, you know, st statistically significant outcome. Uh, so I guess the real world will be the real test on that. So <laughs> is the Zooks an autonomous vomitorium? <laughs> <laughs> Clean up in Zooks aisle one. I shouldn't have made that's not fair but anyway <clears throat> you got everything blocked off you got them facing the wrong way you got four wheel steering it's going 70 miles an hour everybody's in there it's like a funhouse ride or something i mean you know get the pixie dust it's like the tilt -a whirl the carney i don't know it's just the conclusion i came to maybe i'm wrong i mean i don't know anything so now Let's talk about Amazon. So, all right, so let's say, all right, well, they didn't buy it for the taxi. They bought it for the autonomous driving system. That's what they want to get into. Uh, taking this talent, uh, the great disruptor uh, to the autonomous vehicle space, purchase of Zooks, $1.2 billion. Uh, Amazon plans to work with Zooks to create a fleet of self-driving taxis in competition with Alphabet's Waymo, which is like nowhere. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. Uh, 
is the e-commerce giant in a position to dominate yet another industry? Um, blah, 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 blah. Zooks marks Amazon's biggest investment to the autonomous vehicle sector. Second largest acquisition they did after Zappos, which is the shoe company. And Whole Foods, uh, which was actually quite a bit more, but cool went to Zappos. Uh, the country company was marked down from 3.2 billion in uh, value. That's what it was valued at in 2018. So its stock has dropped. Read between the lines. Perhaps uh, self-driving not working out quite right. I don't know. Um, struggle with management turnover, and and it. Uh, they put a billion dollars into this project since the beginning. So, paid $1.2 billion. Value had dropped from $3.2 billion. Billion in invested and they had a lot of management turnover. So, this is, this is out of Forbes. And, um, I don't know. I guess it's a deal, you know. Got a deal, what, 60% off? Now, this is the technology that they bought. And Elon Musk, uh, I'm just going to paraphrase what he has said on this, on this type of system is, it's so expensive to outfit a car with all these sensors that, you know, there's some question as to whether it would be economically viable. And I believe this is a system also used mapping. So I think the area has to be mapped where it's in. But... Um, Let's just go through. This is their video from their website. This is the full stack. Um, got a little stutter there. That's the Zooks. And now look at this sensor array they got on here. They got those things. Those are the LIDARs, I believe. And then these are what? I'm not sure. Ultrasonic or cameras, but perhaps cameras. So. And then they've got the computer system in the bay. And um, there's their self-driving and um, autonomous driving. And, uh, and I believe that's the mapping they have. And um, anyway, it's, it's a kind of a kind of a standard kind of a thing. I'm going to try to find. Yeah, let's just go through these sensors again you could see what they have here look at this all these things all these things and all these things that's three layers of sensors there must be you know 50 sensors on there something like that anyway that's what that's what Amazon bought was this super complex LiDAR and mapping based system. And again, I believe Elon Musk, who, who we might consider to be one of the leaders in this field, has, you know, said that these uh, LiDAR and mapping systems aren't uh, viable. Well, they're, I guess they're viable in constrained areas. But anyway, LiDAR, he's definitely against them. Anyway, very complex self drive, very complex. Now, just by way of example, uh, this is comma.ai. I don't know if you've heard of Open Pilot. Uh, this is, there you go. This, this is driving itself, obviously. There's no one in the driver's seat. This is a 100-mile 100 ride they did, 100 miles hands-free. Um, in this Toyota, and this is the comma dot AI, the comma one, or the uh, this is this this little thing up here is what's driving the car, and that is the motherboard off a Samsung phone that's in a 3D printed case, and it's got a USB cable that goes down and hooks into the uh, 
the port uh, that uh, the the digital connect port uh, in the car and uh, now and it gets the power from uh, this camera up here so it's got its own camera on it and uh, it's pretty much so it is self-contained and it plugs into the car and it uses an existing so these are cars that have driver assist systems they have steering and braking and gas in them but this provides the visual driving okay and it takes over control of the car and drives the car. And the thing is, this is open source. And you could download it. Anybody could download it. It's George Holtz, who was initially hired by Elon Musk to work on his system. And he told Musk, he goes, I'll make a better system than the one you got, you know. And he goes, oh, well, okay. And he goes, uh, all right, I'll tell you what I'll do it for. I, I forget what the figure was. It's like $12 million. And uh, <clears throat> Elon said, okay. And then after Holt started working on it, Elon goes, well, according to an interview, well, I have to, I am the one that's going to decide whether it works or not and whether you get paid or not. And, and Holtz wanted to do a, an independent tribunal or something to check it out, something like that, allegedly. So he, he you know, told him to piss off and uh, started his own group. I think he's in San Diego now, and he's got like five young guys, and they're writing this. And this is, again, it's all open source. It's all on the Internet. You can download this system, and this hardware, you know, is all readily available. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you can make your own one of these, or you could buy them from him. But anyway, I'm just saying, as an alternative to the Zook system, um, this is, and this operates off a cell phone camera, basically. And uh, this has no mapping and um, no LIDAR and uh, visual. And it's, um, you know, this, this George Holtz guy is quite something. He hacked, the, he was the first one to hack an iPhone. Anyway, I never heard of them until recently. I was so I'm going to do a video on this. I think this system is fascinating. But again, open source. Okay, you can download the source code from the internet. Okay, no problem. Of course, he's always updating it, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, yeah, you buy this little unit uh, and uh, you stick it on the. It's a thousand bucks, and I'll show you. And then. You hook it into your car's computer system. And you got to have the self-driving in place already. No navigation program. No, I, I don't believe this navigates, at least not yet. But, but that's all you do. And turn this thing on, and it drives. And he's been really ingenious the way he's collected the data for this and everything. And uh, they're upgrading it all the time. And anyway, and again, this is a 100, they did 100 miles without an intervention so and that's real world and <laughs> they do these dodgy tests they they take the car out and let it drive itself it's quite hilarious if you check out some of the videos but uh this is real world this is not a closed streak and that's highway speed so anyway fascinating um so uh, if they wanted a driving system they could have downloaded this technically i mean i know it's not that easy but and then, uh, just so we don't, this is, this is the, uh, the unit right here. And again, this is based on a Samsung uh, phone motherboard. I think they do some minor. These are, they got a camera watching the driver. And if the driver, you know, falls asleep or whatever, it, it'll shut the thing off. But uh, comfortably on your windshield, includes infrared camera for 24 seven driver monitoring. That's this, uh, draws power from your car, custom cooling has integrated Panda and OCPD port. The comma two pairs with the comma connect app OS and, on, and uh, provides video storage of drives and camera access. So anyway, you buy the hardware and you download the app, and then you uh, go into the open source hardware and then, um, there's some other features, and um, I'm not sure if you have to buy a, a fairly cheap subscription that stores your driving data. I'm not, I'm not sure, but it's it's about a thousand bucks. 
and then uh, so that's it it's the whole system right there and on the other side of this there's like a regular cell phone camera crazy works and these are the these are the most compatible cars and they're all recent models and they have up oh, and they have uh, driver assist in them already they have like uh, you know uh, driver assist systems lane keeping they, they do lane keeping and emergency braking and cruise control they're not self-driving systems they're just uh, driver assist as long as you have this uh, i don't know what level it is driver assist functions of adapt uh these are the cars that work best performing functions of adaptive cruise control and automated lane centering so these are the two systems you have to have in place uh on the highway and then stop and go more uh blah 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 anyway these aren't the only ones these are the ones they recommend and, uh, it's pretty crazy like i said i'm going to do a video on this so by way of summary amazon bought flailing i'll call it flailing not failing flailing self-driving uh, car company for a billion dollars it's got a uh, kind of a carny ride design i don't want to minimize it these guys work so hard on it but the research was there anyone could have found it and um and their autonomy you know they, they haven't I mean, there's there's more video of doing autonomous highway driving. City driving, I don't think they, I don't know. It's questionable. Like I said, that was on a closed course, the sample they have on there. Uh, it's not a pusher, but it's not uh, publicly uh, uh, demonstrated autonomy on open roadways. And, um, and, you know, Amazon is doing this. And then they made this giant investment in Rivian which keeps uh, allegedly getting in trouble for hiring ex-Tesla people that are taking IP with them, allegedly. And um, they want to make their own Amazon Basics van through Rivian, who still hasn't really built a vehicle. Again, I, I don't know. I don't know what Amazon's... I mean, I don't know. What do I know? Maybe it's a good idea. Seems there would be another way to do that. But, uh, you know, you got the uh, workhorse, a uh, bunch of other places. Oh, workhorse. Let's talk about workhorse. This is a, a little uh, video I did. You can check it out. It's about Amazon's drone delivery program. And I got to tell you, you got to watch this video. I go through it. They, they spent a billion dollars and then they gave it up and they outsourced it to a, like a German company and an Australian company. And there's a punchline to all this. It involves Workhorse, the truck company Workhorse that's going up now, which is probably what they should have bought, you know. Anyway, the point is uh, you can watch that video. That's one of my videos. Just go online. It. So uh, is Amazon losing it? Did uh, Amazon make the right decision to buy Zooks? In, in the long run, will it work out? I don't know. 1.2 billion, you know, a billion here, a billion there. Pretty soon you're talking about a lot of money. Who said that? Some senator said that. Uh, anyway, like I said, this video here, they dismantled their drone. They worked 12 years on their drone program. And then ended up, you know, basically giving everybody the heave-ho and outsourcing everything to third parties unbelievable uh, anyway and you know they've lost control of the program now this um this is just kind of an aside but uh jeff bezos allegedly wants his girlfriend's brother to pay his 1.7 million dollar legal fees for defending against the case the brother brought against jeff bezos which evidently allegedly was a bogus case i don't know that much about this it's all alleged but uh, the brother sued Bezos for saying he released some videos and Bezos, and then 
there was lack of evidence on that, so it was a mistrial. So Bezos is now countersuing to collect a 1.7 million in fees. Okay, 1.7 million in legal fees. He just spent 1.2 billion. He's the richest guy in the world running the most valuable public company there is. I don't know. Anyway. I don't know. I think, uh, you know, like I was looking at uh, BlackRock. You know BlackRock, the, uh, the uh, investment bankers or whatever? I'd say, well, you know, and if, if BlackRock's investing in something, it's got to be good. Well, it turns out BlackRock has so much money, they basically invest in everything. And uh, I don't know if this is where Amazon is. Are they losing their their edge? I don't know. This is a, I don't know. Uh, you know, it's strange. Uh, but um, I think he and uh, Musk are, uh, Bezos and Musk are, you know, Yes, match or something but anyway the point is i don't know about this zooks purchase i hope they don't write it off like they did with the uh, with the drone program anyway that's my take on the subject i thought this would be an interesting video i'm going to get back i'm going to make some aptera videos and some other videos i just wanted to kick this one off creepy music starting to play here and anyway that's it i hope you liked the video i'm not a financial advisor and i'll put a link to that blimp video on here and uh thanks for watching i hope you liked the video All right, let those links come up. All right, guys, thank you.